So we're here with Sridhar and Raju from Zoho, and um, we have Dion Almeyer here behind the camera. Hi, Dion. Hi, Dion. <laughs> I'm Brad Newberg, and today we're going to talk about a really exciting announcement that you all are working on. You want to talk about what sure. you're working on? Yeah, we have uh, been working on the offline version of Zoho Mail. Mm -hmm. Zoho Mail is one of the products uh, that has been in private beta uh, from, from us. And Zoho is primarily known as the office suite, but there's a lot of stuff that's beyond it. So, and Zoho Mail is one of them, and that is now going offline, uh, or supporting uh, offline. Again, that's based on Google ES. This is really exciting because also this is part of your larger Zoho office suite that's now coming, beginning to come out of beta. Absolutely. I mean, uh, the applications have been evolving, mm -hmm. and uh, they're really uh, maturing. So, some of these additional functionalities, like uh, in the offline and all, are already. We have the business applications as well, eventually they'll follow, but we think mail is an important component to offer offline support. Mm -hmm. So just uh, moving with that. So do you want, would you like to describe sort of what the user sees, what the offline experience feels like? So you here in mail we have done it in a more seamless way where you don't require any kind of a manual intervention, which is what initially when we put down in Zoho Writer, you had to manually click go offline. Here in mail, it automatically detects when you are offline with some small delay, there's a detection interval, and then it will automatically switch to the offline mode. Similarly, when you get back online, and, you know, that's that's how the system works now. Nice. That's one of the nicer things about this. Because yeah. we want to make the whole experience more similar. We are kind of figuring out the whole gears and the offline experience of this, and we're making it better now. In many cases, you don't plan going on offline. Just have something disconnected, or don't you don't have a signal on your card? So, so it's important that to Wi Fi goes, yeah. 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 Wi -Fi. so it, it's important to provide this seamless synchronization of the back end. Mm -hmm. As long as you have your tab open, it will basically take care of synchronizing it also with the back end. So, so, I've gotten to play with it, and I'm really impressed. And I, I know how hard this is offline is hard, especially something like mm -hmm. email is very difficult. So, um, I'm sure folks are really interested in hearing more about the technical details of, of what you've achieved, uh, I'd love to hear sort of the overall architecture sure. that you've used to, to structure this. Well, it's pretty much same, similar to our Zoho Writer, except that we have added the synchronization engine in this case. Mm -hmm. Unlike a Zoho Writer, which is uh, more of a file-centric, this mail is a database-centric. There are lots of... Uh, also of, database data. Also, both, yeah, structured both, data. Both structured also data. Uh, things like your core metadata related to your mail is saved in the database, but you have other flat files like images in your in your email mm -hmm. attachments. All of those are saved in the file system. So, and the synchronization is, engine is the key. So we have used the worker pool module to build that synchronization. Mm -hmm. And because you have lots of emails, it's important to just handle the load accordingly. Mm -hmm. So what happens uh, while synchronizing? What happens if uh, something goes wrong? Yeah. So those issues ha need to be handled. So mm -hmm. we basically introduce a concept of uh, just the handling it in batches. Mm -hmm. So at any point of time, we handle 25 email per emails per batch, mm -hmm. and then we follow it up with other emails, mm -hmm. especially when you have lots of emails to be handled. Uh, currently, we support about 5,000 emails in offline mode. Mm -hmm. By default, we just do 50, which is because we want to get started immediately. Mm -hmm. But at the back end, we, we then synchronize to about 5,000 emails. Yes. But they are done in batches there. So you store them in the Gears Relational Database? You the metadata. Yeah. Oh, just the metadata. Yeah. The metadata is what is saved in the database. Mm -hmm. The other uh, attachments and all other files are saved in the uh, file system. Mm -hmm. But of course, all the images, uh, the, the HTML files, static files, all of them are saved in the local server there. Oh, you mean local server? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. So the email contents are actually in the local server. Absolutely, yeah. That's interesting. Uh, no, the contents of the email are the database. It's okay. basically the attachments, images, other things are in the file right. system. Yeah. yeah. And it's really nice that you do seamless online offline detection. So we use the chat technology, which has an email persistent connection that's embedded in this. It's just exactly similar to the Google Talk embedded. And we use that to detect and trigger this offline code, actually. That's the really the... Like sorry. Gmail, we also have chat integrated into Zoho Mail. Mm -hmm. So our chat bus really knows whether you're online or not offline. Nice. So that we use that as one of the technology. 
one of the methods to know whether you are offline or online. The second method is we just do an Ajax call frequently mm -hmm. uh, to just ensure that whether you are online or offline. We just use a combination of right, both right. based on the scenario. That's interesting. So you, so you do you have a comment style connection for the chat? Or yeah, the there's a, that's basically the persistent connection through which that of people and packets would be transmitted, and that's what triggers the whole process. Nice. From um, so, what were some like challenges, like some hard challenges that you had to solve? This itself was one of them. This yeah. whole uh, thinking and detecting online, offline was one of the big ones, actually. Yeah. And then mail, of course, you know, what if mail had changed from some other client? Mm -hmm. Those are the, these are like really IMAP type of issues. Yeah. In, in, in fact, one of the interesting things is offline client, whether you do it in IMAP or through Gears, mm -hmm. the issues are very similar. Mm. You're facing the same kind of, uh, you know, the state would have changed. What about un red and red status and things like that. So keeping track of all that, right, so we right. basically had to do all those. Because things. it's not just online and offline. You could be using Zoho Mail on your iPhone, which we do support off iPhone version. And if you read an email there, it's important to make sure that that data is synchronized to the offline right. version as well. So these are important to handle, yeah. right? especially in There's a lot of cases like that. So in effect, it actually becomes a sort of a IMAP over HTTP, if you will, mm -hmm. reinventing IMAP over HTTP in a way. That's what it ends up becoming. And we recognized it, and at least the IMAP type of things offered like a template to do this. But that's really what you're doing here. So. Do you have any suggestions? So as soon as you start doing offline, you hit the syncing problem. And it sounds like that was one of the big challenges. Do you have suggestions for people, some patterns? I would say, you know, in fact, uh, Gear should, some should offer some kind of an IMAP or HTTP type of mechanism. Huh. All those calls that are in those kind of protocols, it's if it's Gear already builds it in, mm -hmm. for the next uh, kind of these types of things will be really useful. Sure. But this is a framework level thing. This yeah. is a protocol yeah. that should be built in. Yeah. Because now we have to take this uh, synchronization engine and, and implement it with our, to our, in our other products as well. So having a synchronizing engine, and even to some extent, detecting the uh, online, offline status. All of that should be in uh, yeah, there. Now, now you right. have Chrome, yeah. so I guess Chrome can support some of that <laughs> by default, online, offline status, I guess. And this this actually, this main syncing problem itself offers a good template for Gears itself yeah. to offer a library which any application could should be able to exploit. Right. That is all the, it's a common pattern of problems here. One nice thing is HTML5 is, has online offline detection. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. it's not yet. It's not yeah. yet. Happened, yeah. But it's a nice. But because you don't. In fact, Gears is a very retrofit like browser, like IE. Yeah, IE6, exactly. Which you don't want to mention <laughs> the yeah. in, in <laughs> yeah. um, so And the, uh, another problem there is uh, initially when we, the first cut when we implemented it, we were just doing it in one shot, syncing all your mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of emails in one shot. That really didn't work out well. So that's the reason we had to break it up into multiple mm -hmm. smaller chunks to synchronize it. So that that's kind of a key pattern to really increase your reliability. Yes. So yes. you don't have to redo everything. Yes. Did you kind of set up a transactional type payload? Like we do have a transactional payload at, at the back end. Nice. So the back end, there's a state about where you are. Yeah. And there are, there are other interesting or important things to be taken care of, especially the security. Uh -huh. Let's say in the offline mode, you download all the JavaScripts and all and tries to do a call through the JavaScript onto the server side. Mm -hmm. So such things have to be had to be handled on the, on the online version of of uh, the home mail version as well. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the changes that we had to do. Is there um, so what features when you're offline are available and what aren't? And how did you make a choice there? Most of the features that are available, I mean most of the basic features uh, like just viewing your emails. Uh, viewing attachments. Currently, it's an optional uh, feature. You can choose to download all the attachments as well, but you have the functionality available. But other, uh, there are other things like you cannot view your spam folder. We don't synchronize your spam right. folder. <laughs> uh, I think that's okay. Yeah. Uh, and there are some other things that are available integrated with other Zoho applications. Such mm -hmm. things are not available. Like if you have an attachment, you'll not be able to view that in Zoho Writer. Yeah. Uh, the things, but that's one of the really cool things about Zoho, though, is the level of integration. Yes, and you can pull it into these different things. Absolutely. Nice. And otherwise, the basic things, like just composing an email, send it out, 
and it puts your email in your outbox. So whenever you're connected back online, it automatically sends those emails. Nice. So these things, these are basic things that do work. So you can synchronize all your unread emails, view them, view them on the plane. Look. So all the basic things to work. Yeah. So our goal is to get to that, that plain two-set scenario, which is the common people right. that keep beating right. you on the head with, you know, what happens on the plane. Yeah. So now this is a good, you know, this is what happens on the plane. So you want to read your emails and respond. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. basic stuff that you want. Yeah. Um, and so, so search is one area that we still have some work to be done because mm -hmm. the search is obviously in the back end now. Mm. So we have to exploit something in the Yes, but that's not it. Yeah. So that's probably one of the, the most important ones to get it to work right. in the future. Mm -hmm. sure, so. Um, so, Gears on Firefox, Safari, Chrome, Nae, are you supporting all those browsers? Mm -hmm. We do support Firefox, IE, 100% uh, now. Uh -huh. uh, we did test it with Chrome and Safari. Most of the functionality were. Yeah. Uh, from the Gears side, uh, well, at least the offline side, we don't have any problem. Yeah. But uh, it's not 100% yes. uh, uh, supported in, in those. But we have made some tweaks in the last couple of weeks to just uh, get the basic functionality working. Yeah. So the basic functionality does work mm -hmm. on Safari and Chrome. Yeah. But we generally have some issues in Chrome. It's just such a new browser. And, yeah. You know, yeah. We wouldn't expect everything to work. So about 90, 95% of the way there, we are still doing more t tuning to get things to work on Chrome. But we were, we definitely will support both Safari and Chrome. Um, so when will this be available and where can folks get it? It's, it's available now. Uh -huh. it's, uh, they can just go to zohomail.com. Mm -hmm. So there are two ways where you can access Zohomail. One is directly go to zohomail.com or mail.zoho.com and you'll see a setup offline. So the first time you'll have to set up offline where you can specify how many mails you want to download by default and other things. And from then or on, if you already have gears installed, it will prompt you. Yes, it will prompt you that uh, you, you need to have, have this. Uh, just you need to give it a permission. Another cool thing that we have added is uh, similar to uh, some of your other apps. We also add a shortcut to your desktop uh, so that you can directly launch Zoho Mail from your desktop. Right. Using the gears, gears obviously, using, obviously gears, using, yeah. using the gears thing. So that is one way to access Zoho Mail. The other way is through Zoho Business. So if you are using Zoho Business, that's our integrated suite of all Zoho application. Uh, Zoho Mail is integrated there, and even there, you can just uh, use the offline version. Even there, it synchronizes the content. So that's a really unique aspect of Zoho is the Zoho Business, Zoho CRM. You want to touch on? Sure. Uh, we have the the business side of applications as mm -hmm. well. That is CRM, project management, web conferencing, and quite a few like Zoho Creator, which lets you create applications online databases uh, and, and quite a few, a few project management and other applications. So this one gives us, the, at least the offline version in mail gives us a good platform which now we can take it to other business applications as well. Yes. And that's the plan as, as we said earlier. And Zoho Business itself integrates a lot of these mail, the office suite, calendaring, all of that, brings it into one user interface yes. which looks more, uh, you know, uh, what's familiar to a desktop user. That's really the uh, point of it. But they also have indi individual entry points. That's the nice thing about this where the application can be uh, accessed through an integrated portal as well as through uh, an you know, individual nice. entry. So, so Dan was telling me you all have some other exciting announcements. That, that yeah, we recently uh, did the Zoho Creator Marketplace. Mm -hmm. That's, so Zoho Creator is our application creation environment. Really you create database applications and scripting all the put custom logic and all of that. And that has been there and we launched a new version of it, Zoho Creator 3.0. Along with it, we also launched a marketplace where people can actually post their applications, charge money even, and discuss, share, those types of things. So it's, it's a really a marketplace for that. And that has been very well received. In fact, our, our very popular launches recently. And Zoho Creator itself has been doing really well. Yeah. And on that score, there is some interesting announcements coming mm. with Google mm. uh, Apple as well. So I'll, I'll, mm. I'll hold it for a cool. future announcement. Some exciting news for the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zoho Mail is, is definitely interesting because it has over 100,000 applications created by our users wow. already. And uh, the marketplace really fits in well. And it's, again, 
in that case, it's completely driven by user requests. People mm -hmm. wanted something like this, so we just created it. Um, it's been going, doing very well lately. Nice. Well, um, it's been really great. Any any final thoughts about? Well, we'd like to thank Google TS again. Yeah. That's that's uh, it's been a boon for us in this case. Yeah, we definitely want it. Uh, we appreciate all the you know, support you guys have given us through all this. We've been in a very close working relationship. We really love Google for supporting us Thank all the way on this. Thank you. Thanks a lot.